hi and welcome back to the channel and uh, you may notice something slightly different about my Mac desktop because I have managed to um, upgrade my um, Mac OS to Ventura and I am now running 13.6.7 and technically um, according to Apple this is not possible because I have got a 2013 iMac it is only supported as far as uh, Catalina, which was 10.15. And I have been talking about getting a new Mac and this, that and the other because of being, not being able to upgrade a lot of my software like Logic Pro and Native Access, Native Instruments stuff and various other bits of software. It took me about two goes to get it to work. The first time I tried it, it didn't work because I don't think I'd formatted the... Um, the USB stick um, properly. So the second time it did, it did take uh, about three and a half hours, I think, to do. Um, I kind of did it in two stages. First kind of part in about, took about an hour and a half, uh, and that is downloading Ventura, uh, which is about 12 gigabyte, and um, creating a, a USB kind of boot drive. And I used a Cruiser 32 gigabyte USB stick. Um, but to be honest, I would recommend maybe getting something a bit faster and I've got a two terabyte SSD in the iMac so that was that was pretty um, pretty quick obviously for transferring but the uh, the actual cruiser is a bit on the slow side so I will show you how um, I did this and it is basically using the Mr Macintosh and the open core legacy patcher so this video is approximately uh, 30 minutes long follow all this information then you can do uh, what I have done and upgrade your Mac to something that is far far superior than Catalina it does also include things like security updates as well which is pretty cool and obviously I will leave a link to this in the description but uh, he has done a lot of videos on this kind of open core legacy patcher and this is the one for Ventura so you don't have to get Ventura you could get Big Sur Monterey and even Simona but I didn't want to go to Simona uh, before you ask well why you're not getting Simona well because it's just out and it's full of bugs a lot of the native instrument stuff is um, is not supported yet so it's better to get I mean uh, Ventura's been out for what over a year this this video's uh, a year old so it's been out for certainly obviously more than that all the bugs have been sorted in Ventura and native instrument stuff support it so that is one of the main problems i had because native access had stopped supporting um catalina um so i couldn't update to the latest version of native access so i was struggling a bit with um some of the installs and it was really really slow to even open native access so that was one of the reasons and the other reason is to get the um, the latest version of logic pro i'm on logic 10.6 at the moment um, and I will be able to get the brand new version of Logic 11, which has just appeared. So like I said, uh, this is certainly worth having a go at. You do have to be patient. You know, it, it does it does take a while. Like I said, it's between at least, you know, three and a half to four hours, depending on how slow or quick your drives are. Don't worry when it, when it stops, because a couple of times it would just like, the progress bar would just stop at like 98%. And it would be there for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And you're thinking, oh, for God's sake, you know, I got this far. Um, and then it, it goes through a lot of processes and reboots itself at least three or four times. And like I said, you can do it in two halves. Like I said, you can you can get everything ready um, and the USB stick done and everything and all that downloaded and then go and actually do the install. Um, and that's how I kind of did it rather than doing it in a one hour. Um, which is quite a long um, process. You just get sick of um, going back and forward to your Mac. I'll just play you a wee bit of this um, and just it'll just tell Older you. Older unsupported Mac with Open Core Legacy Patcher. This will allow you to breathe new life into your older Mac so you can install newer applications, unlock Ventura's new features, and install the latest security updates to keep your Mac secure. This video will be a full step-by-step -step walkthrough that anybody can follow. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Right, so... Okay, really quickly, there is, before we begin, we got to go over some really important notes. And I I've watched this a few times, so when I came to do it, I could skip all this, but you kind of, you, you're probably better off um, kind of watching the whole thing first and then maybe go back and then do it. Don't just do it the first time that you watch this. So it's worth watching a couple of times 
and then going back and do it. Once you've watched it, you can skip the first five minutes and the start of the walkthroughs at five minutes. You can pretty much do, like I said, the first um, kind of 10 minutes and then you can get into the actual install process of, of Ventura uh, once you've got all the USB uh, flash drive prepared and all this sort of thing because um, like I said it, there is a lot of steps to it but it, like I said as long as you follow it and it will be slightly different in some cases because obviously the open core patcher has um, has changed obviously from when this video was done so there's a, obviously a newer version of the uh, the open core legacy patcher some things might be slightly different but you can normally work out and just you know sort it out yourself well I, I certainly managed to to do it because he's he's doing this on a macbook which is not a problem but if you've got a, an imac for instance like me and i use a bluetooth keyboard and a bluetooth mouse well they won't work and um, because when you're trying to reboot and uh, do anything they're not connected so the first thing that you need to get before you do this if you have an imac is a wired keyboard and a wired mouse or you won't get anywhere and obviously you have to select certain things on the screen and obviously click or use the keyboard and whatever to press enter. So that's the first thing. And like I said, I would recommend maybe getting as fast a USB drive stick as you can, because uh, that will make a difference on the um, the kind of install process. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done a lot of these videos, so he kind of does know what he's talking about. And like I said, you can see there um, all the steps that are involved. So there's a lot of chapters and it goes on for like 25 minutes. I would say, you know, you're talking about five minutes to maybe kind of 20, 20 minutes turning on the show boot pickers, but the last thing that you kind of really need to do. But I would recommend watching the whole thing first and then do it. Because like I said, I was looking at getting a 2019 iMac, which is still running on a five. So I've got an i5 quad core processor with, uh, like I said, two terabyte, SSD and 24 gigabyte of RAM, which is more than capable of running my software like uh, Logic and DaVinci Resolve. Physically, they look exactly the same. I mean, it's got a higher res screen, but because this the spec on, on this, um, even back in 2013, was like 4K, so I don't really need 5K um, on my Mac because I'm sitting about, you know, 10 inches away from it. And to be honest, I have noticed that the contrast on the screen is already better. So it's using some sort of contrast software. Um, so the type looks sharper and the colors are more, um, are brighter. So, I mean, already that's a straight improvement. The system settings is probably one of the biggest differences. Um, and you can see if you've got an iPad, you probably will recognize this kind of um, way of working so it's got a kind of and the only thing is you can't adjust the width you're stuck so that's 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 great if you're on an ipad um but not so much on this um so like i said there's there's all the difference you've got wi-fi bluetooth um your notifications screen time in general um, and things like so the wallpaper so this wallpaper is a bit on the bright side so i'm on ventura graphic for some reason it doesn't have a landscape like um so that's that's Big Sur, um, and uh, if we go to show all, you've got uh, Big Sur, Catalina, um, and that's Monterey there. So Monterey was a, was a graphic as well. So um, I'm not quite sure why they stopped that because I quite like Catalina, um, and you can download these. So these are um, I used to use Dynamic, which obviously goes darker as the day goes on, um, and uh, I'm kind of using. Um, so that is the dark version of Ventura. So I'm on dynamic, so this will go darker, but it is a bit on the bright side. I mean, there are other ones. You can see there's a lot in the cloud that you can download and there's kind of some graphic ones, um, which are a bit scary and a bit too, and it keeps defaulting to dark for some reason. So if I go into light, you can see that is, um, yeah, they're just, no, I mean, it's a bit busy. Um, so that's the lake and, um, yeah, they're not, I mean, they're not brilliant, are they? So that is that is certainly something that is completely different from the uh, the settings in Catalina. I'll just, well, well, it reminds me. So I've got four updates. So these are the updates that have came up from Catalina. So I've got Logic Pro, which is the main one, GarageBand, which I'm not even sure I'll bother doing, and then iMovie as well got an update. Um, and that's um, going back to 23. And this was three days ago um, that Logic 11 came out. Day uh, of Resolve uh, 18. But there's a few 
Um, yeah, we're going up to 18.6.6. So I might do that, although if it ain't broke, you know, why bother? But like I said, Logic Pro is the big one. So that was the kind of updates that I got. Uh, complete Control has completely changed. It should, it should be called Completely Changed Control because that's gone like Native Access. Um, and I'll just open Native Access and show you how quick it is because this normally took about three minutes to open. Boom, there we go. That's it. And I've got 51 updates. <laughs> Yeah, but then most of those, if we look at the release notes, are uh, Samora. Uh, so Butch Fig Drums, let's have a look, release notes. Um, yeah, Mac OS, Samora compatibility, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I've updated uh, Complete Control and Machine, but and I was going to update Contact. I'm back on uh, Contact 7.4, and we're on uh, 7.10 now. There's just been a new one um, from 7.10. But if you look at the release notes, um, it's a bit of a nightmare. So I'm not going to bother because it crashed when loading instruments in Logic Pro. Well, that's that's really great. You know what I mean? They released it and hadn't even bothered to check Logic Pro was working on bloody Simona. So I'm not going to bother because, like I said, it's just every second one is Logic Pro, Logic Pro, Logic Pro. Um, and even going back to like 7 point whatever, 9, um, you know, Logic Pro. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think I'll just stick until it's a bit, a bit more stable. So at least I know that the Ventura one is going to be more stable than Simona. But like I said, um, I'm, I'll just wait and see. Um, and like I said, a lot of these are just updates for um, Simona and not really anything that I would notice. And uh, and that's about it. And like I said, everything else is working. Analog Lab, Pigments, not a problem. The Arturia Software Center, everything's loading. And I think there's, I've got updates for Analog Lab as well. There is a few new features in the, um, if we go up to here, um, you can see Screen Flick is, is running. Uh, and then you've got your kind of little control from basically like a, an iPhone, iPad, um, and you've got your, so you can adjust the display and the sound. Um, and uh, you play your music and you've got AirDrop, Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi. So that's new. And also, um, Stage Manager is new as well. So if I switch this on uh, and open, um, say, a window, um, say I open Safari, if I, um, if I, instead of it going down to the dock, it will go down here. Um, and then, so if I open, uh, say, uh, Fontbook as well, uh, and then just close that down, it will go down here as well. So instead of it going down into the dock at the bottom, uh, you can actually get a better idea of, of what it is that's there. So it actually tells you, you know, Safari, font book, and then you just click uh, and, and you can open it there and open it there and it switches kind of between the two. Um, and I think if you shift click, you can uh, shift click and you can open them both. So yeah, so it's quite good. It's, it's a lot, it's quicker than, um, so I'm not sure. I'll, maybe, I'll leave it on and test it out anyway. Um, and see how anyway, it goes. But thanks for watching, and I hope uh, if you have enjoyed this video, uh, you will like, subscribe, share, and comment, uh, and I will see you in the next one.